Okay, good, great, thanks. Good evening, everyone. How are we doing? Uh, welcome. Already we're up to the second weekend, the second Sunday of the Advent season. And uh, our readings taken from uh, the prophet Isaiah once again, and this is where I like to keep my focus. Uh, our gospel reading um, is uh, where John the Baptist, the precursor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, makes his grand entrance with those famous words, prepare the way of the Lord. That's what the Advent season is all about, preparing the way for the Lord in our hearts so that he may take residence in our lives. But Isaiah um, presents an interesting scenario. Uh, there was a group, a group of persons in the Greek world called Stoics who felt that life should be controlled completely by reason, that we must accept the moment as it presents itself, that everything is predetermined, um, that our job in life is to accommodate ourselves to our faith. And as such, we should not be controlled by feelings or by wishful thinking. But when I listen to Isaiah in our reading, I see something different. Isaiah promotes a longing for something better, that things are not predetermined. He says here in verse 10, Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Isaiah is telling us that it's okay to feel deeply. It's okay not to focus on what we see before us, because when we look at what is before us, we see a great deal of, of brokenness and a lot of negativity. He's telling us that this is not a permanent state. And I feel sometimes we focus a little bit too much on what is before us. I've noticed, for instance, people talking about COVID over and over and over and over again. We, we're being over um, so to speak. Um, Isaiah is saying that this is not a permanent state and we need to, to have that ability to feel deeply, um, to want something better in life. Um, not to be like these Stoics, but to transcend their kind of um, negative uh, pessimism. Um, not to be like people who just feel that we have to live in the moment and just face whatever is there. That will cause us to live too much on the surface. Isaiah, on the other hand, reminds us that it's okay to feel deeply and it's okay to have a longing in life for, for better things, for love, for freedom for kinship, for communion, and for healing. And you know something, so often in life our hearts cry out um, for God, especially in moments of despair, uh, when we go through our heartaches and when we go through our hopelessness. Um, we must not allow um, hopelessness to scratch away at us and to cool our persuasion and, and our desire in the desire in our hearts for something that is a lot grander. Um, today's reading is a steady reminder that God is our hope. His love wipes away the tears from our faces and promises all people nourishment. And surely, if God wipes away those tears, it's okay for us to cry. It's okay for us to grieve. It's okay for us to feel deeply. We are all invited into a full life, a life that is by no means simple. Uh, sometimes we do feel broken and lost and afraid. Um, perhaps so broken and so lost and so afraid that it might seem difficult or even impossible to rejoice or to be glad. And sometimes we might even feel devoid of hope. But no, God comes to us, a God of love. He will be there to comfort us, to lead us up the mountain, to give us life again and again and again. Verse 9 tells us this. What, what beautiful and hopeful words. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, 
O Jerusalem, the herald of good tidings, lift it up and do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. My friends, let us give thanks that the God we need is the God that we have. He is a veil remover, a death destroyer, a life giver, a wholehearted lover. If death has been destroyed, then hope is alive forever. Let us pray that that hope to come will be fully alive to us in this Advent season, that it may lead us to rejoice in God's abundant love. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we pray especially for those who have lost hope, those who despair, and those who can only see negativity before them. Bless them, Lord, and strengthen their hearts that they may lift their eyes to the mountain from which our help comes and that you may restore the joy of their youth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. My dear friends, as we look forward in this Advent season to the saving power of Jesus Christ, let me offer a prayer and light the second candle of the Advent wreath. O Lord, stir up our hearts that we may prepare for your coming, the coming of your only begotten Son, that through his coming we may be made worthy to serve you with pure minds. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Took a while to get the light going, as often happens in life, but eventually it gets there and the light of Christ shines in our hearts. God bless you. Continue to have a great Advent season and prepare for the coming of the Lord. Your delivery is close at hand. Amen.